Hey, good morning. How's it going? Good to not see you. Uh, thank you for emailing me, man. I hope everything's going okay. Very proud of you. You made the honor roll and whatnot. Uh, but let's get down to work. Um, I'm going to go over a couple word, uh, a couple uh, concepts first, a couple ideas first. I will try to speak slowly. I will do my best. I'm sorry. Um, and then I'll go over the questions. Um, there's some things you need to know about quadrilaterals in general and parallelograms in general to do this stuff. So your sheet focuses on uh, squares, rectangles, and rhombuses, which is, is cool. Um, it's good to know some of the other rules. I don't know if you've done them already. I'm going to send you some notes, too, on these uh, types of quadrilaterals in general. Um, so we're going to start over here. We're going to start with the uh, uh, parallelogram. So it's called a parallelogram uh, because it has two sets of parallel sides. Uh, they're not obviously parallel to each other because they intersect. Um, there's some other things that are uh, going on here as well. Um, oh, smart board. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so you have two sets of parallel sides. There's some uh, some other things you need to know too, though, um, and they're going to be a little bit important. Maybe not right now for what you're doing, um, but in the future they will be. And uh, the first thing is that your opposite angles are uh, congruent. So these two are the same, and these two are the same. Okay. Um, I can go into how to, how to prove that if you want, but that that's maybe for another time. On um, your opposite sides are congruent. So these two sides are the same and these two sides are the same. Um, so you've got this thing where your opposite angles are congruent. Any two angles in a row, so if I take this angle and this angle, we'll call them angle one and angle two. If I add any two consecutive angles in a row, they're going to equal 180 degrees. Um, so again, like I said, I'll send you some notes on this. But there's a lot going on here, and the parallel events become an increasingly more powerful thing because there's so many things you can tell about them. Um, your sheet also focuses on diagonals. Um, and again, if you want me I can go, if you know anything about triangle proofs, I can help you with this. Um, but first of all, you should know if these are parallel, which is the definition, then you have, uh, you know, ultimate interior angles. Uh, hopefully, you studied those, right? Uh, but you've got those kind of everywhere. But these two are the same, and these two are the same. Um, and you can do that the other way, too, um, under a different color. That these two are the same, okay? Um, but more importantly, what your, uh, what your sheet seems to focus on is side lengths, which, it, which is fine. Uh, and that's this, is that your side lengths uh, may bisect each other. They're obviously not all equal in length, because this distance from here to here is much shorter than the distance from here to here. But they do, they bisect, they do, they bisect each other, okay? Good? Um, so for right now, that should be enough. Again, if you want, I can go over these in specific. I can do a video just all about this, but uh, uh, it's early in the morning. I got things I got to do today, okay, buddy? But uh, so I'm going to focus on what you need to know for this sheet. Okay, so all those things that we just talked about, all those things I ran through really fast are true about... Uh, rectangles, and they're true about parallelograms, uh, not parallel, uh, rhombuses, okay? So <clears throat> the difference is um, for a rectangle, uh, all of these are 90 degrees. Um, so all everything else is true. The only difference is this, is that what we said before, that your opposite angles are congruent, well, that's true except they're all congruent, right? Um, so again, though, with that rule we said stays true, if we had uh, angle one and angle two, they still add up to 180 degrees. So it's still a parallelogram, right? Your si everything is true. You're, you have two sets of parallel sides, right? Your opposite sides are congruent. So everything we said about a parallelogram is true. So the other things you need to know are this, is that when your diagonals do bisect each other, um, is that, sorry, this is the case where they are all congruent. So before, you had this distance right here was much bigger than this distance. No longer is that true. Your, your angles all being 90 kind of shifted everything up to where it needs to be. So that's your bonus extra piece of information there uh, that you can get if it's a rectangle. So not only 
Uh, oops, there's a sheep. Um, not only are they all con they're congruent, they are your diagonals bisect each other, they're all congruent to one another. Okay, so everything else is true. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, a rhombus. A rhombus has the unique characteristic that all your sides are congruent. Um, what happens when you do that is now obviously again your your diagonals bisect each other, so these are the same length, but these are a shorter length. What happens though, uh, and this is the unique characteristic, is that you get right triangles. You get a right angle right there in the middle. That your diagonals uh, they are perpendicular to one another. Okay, and that is not true necessarily for uh, rectangles, unless your rectangle is also a square. So the square is like the ultimate parallelogram. That every all these things are true. So everything that was true about a rectangle, right? Your diagonals bisect one another, and they are all the same length, and they also make a 90 degree angle in the middle. So again, it's everything that's true about a parallelogram, okay, uh, is true about a rectangle and a rhombus, but they have some extra rules that go along with them. Those rules all come together when you have a square. So again, we, we have this kind of thing where your rules, everything that's true about a parallelogram is true about a rectangle, it's true about a rhombus, it's true about a square. But everything that's true about a square is also things that are true about a rectangle and about a rhombus. Okay? So if you wanted to get real technical, and I, I don't mean to <laughs> confuse you, but a square is a type of a rectangle, which is a type of a parallelogram. A square is also a type of rhombus, which is a type of parallelogram. Okay, so you've got this kind of family tree you got to work with. So uh, I know I went through that kind of fast. If you have specific questions, if you're going to be doing this for a couple of weeks, you let me know. I will make another one of these videos. I just got things to do today. All right, so on to the work. Let's talk about it. Uh, it says quadrilateral uh, WXYZ is a rectangle. So it's important it's a rectangle, so we know all sorts of things about that. Uh, find each measurement. Uh, ZY. ZY is here. And that's uh, 2X plus 3. Yeah? Uh, and WX, WX is X plus 4. Well, what do you know about the opposite sides of any parallelogram, but, you know, more specifically rectangles, uh, is that those two things are equal. 2X plus 3 is equal to X plus 4. Okay? Now, the thing you want to be careful with here is we're going to solve for X, uh, but that's not going to be your answer. Okay? Uh, we're setting them equal because we that's something we know about them. Okay? So, again, what are we going to do? We're going to subtract X from both sides. Right, and we get x plus 3 is equal to 4. We're going to subtract 3. We're going to find out that x is equal to 1. That is not your answer. That is not your answer. That is not your answer. Okay? You need to plug that back in to find wx. Okay? And if you want to check, you plug it back into both of them. Okay? So up here, if I plug in 1, that 2x plus 3. 2 times 1 plus 3 is going to be 5. Down here, uh, x plus 4, so 1 plus 4 is equal to 5, okay? So wx, side wx is equal to 5. Make sure you're answering the question that they're asking, right? They didn't ask for S, x, they asked for, uh, you know, side wx, okay? All right, next question, what do we got? py, py right here, py uh, is 3x minus 5 and wp is 2x plus 11. So again, same thing you know that these will bisect each other, right? So we know that 3x minus 5 is equal to 2x plus 11. Again, we subtract 2x from both sides. I got x minus 5 is equal to 11. I'm going to add 5, add 5, and find out that x is equal to 16, OK? Uh, so x is equal to 16. we got to plug that back into these uh, equations, so wy Oh my, what did I ask for? oh, my apologies. Oh, my apologies. Um, so, again, so x is equal to 16, right? That's what we know about these things, right? We know that they are congruent to each other. What they're asking for, though, is this whole thing, okay? So, again, what did we find out? We found out x by setting these two equal to each other, right? But what we actually need is we need um, this whole thing, right? So we actually need py and we need wp all together. But since we know that they're the same length, we could say 3 
x minus 5. Um, so we're going to probably, we're going to have 3 times 16 minus 5. 3 times 16 is uh, 16 to 48. 48 minus 5 is going to be 43. Okay? Uh, if you wanted to double check, now all we need to do is we need to say wy is equal to, well, 43 was, uh, which part? Py. That was, so this part is 43. So if this part right here is 43, then the whole thing has to be doubled. This also has to be 43. Um, so that's uh, so wy is to be 43 plus another 43, which is going to be 86. Okay. Again, you want to check to make sure it's right. We also knew that wp was 2x plus 11, which is 2 times 16 plus plus 11, which is uh, 32 plus 11, which is 43. Okay. So again, if you want to do them separately to check and just add those two numbers together, that's fine. But really, if you know one, you automatically know the other one. It's, it's, you don't really have to do it twice if you don't want it. Okay? All right. Good? Moving on. Uh, Z, Y, W. Z, Y, W. The angle Z, Y, W. That's what I want right there. And uh, measure of angle W, Y, X. W, Y, X. Okay? All right, so what do you know about those two angles? Well, this is a rectangle, right? You know, first of all, those two angles are not necessarily the same size. Um, you know that for sure? Nope. Um, what we do know is um, that those two angles have to add up to 90 degrees, right? So what are we going to say? We're going to say, we're going to add those two together. We're going to say 2x sorry, minus 7, and then we're going to add that to 2x plus 5. And we're going to say that that's equal to 90 degrees. Again, we know that this is a rectangle. We know that all these are 90, right? So, again, be careful what they're asking you for, right? Because there might be a different situation where they ask you to set them equal. In this case, the two angles were Z, Y, W, right? And W, X, Y. I'm sorry, W, Y, X. So these are the two angles which add up to 90. So let's add these two together. 2x and 2x is 4x, negative 7, and uh, positive 5 is going to be negative 2. Okay. Um, we're going to add 2 to both sides. We're going to get 4x is equal to 92. Yes. And that means that this is uh, 25, 23, I think. Yeah. x is equal to 23. You can, you can divide that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's right though, right? Uh, it's four times, yeah, so it's 23, okay? Uh, again, you want to check that, plug it back into both of them, but they were asking you for Z, Y, W. Now, here you got to be careful because these two angles are not necessarily equal to each other. So Z, Y, W, Z, Y, W was this first one over here. So we're going to say 2 times 23 minus 7. Well, 2 times 23 is going to be 46 minus 7, so this is going to be 39 degrees. Okay? Uh, and like, be careful. Like I said, those are not necessarily equal. We'll get to cases where those are equal uh, a little bit later. All right. Quadrilateral ABCD is a rhombus, okay? Uh, find each other metric. AB is 14. AB is 14. Oh, that's, that's really green. Hold on. A, B is 14, which means this is 14, which means this is 14, which means this is 14, all the way around, yes? So all the way around. So a, B is 14, how long is B, T? B, C, 14. B, C, very simply, is 14. How do you know it's a rhombus? The definition of a rhombus is that all your sides are going to be the same length. Okay. The measure of angle B, C, D. Where's B, C, D? B, C, D, right here. B, C, D. Uh, it is 54 degrees which means this is a horribly drawn picture, okay? It's a very badly drawn picture. It has not a 54-degree angle, but whatever. Uh, how big is BAC? How big is... BCB, BC, and so they want to know BAC over here. Uh, how are we going to figure this out? So this has to be 54. I... I don't 
don't know that they gave you enough information to solve that problem. Uh, hold on. I don't know if they give enough information. B, C, D. I think you might have a typo in your paper here, buddy. Uh, B, C, D is, the whole thing is 54. Which means we don't have enough process. Um, e, yes. I apologize. Yeah, they do give. I'm sorry. They do give enough information. I'm sorry. I said it was so they give me a I had time to think about it. Yeah, um, when you have a rhombus, my apologies, since all your sides are congruent, right, and you have a 90 degree angle, and uh, these sides are congruent, right, and these are congruent, what you actually have is you have one, two, three of the exact same white triangle in there. So uh, one thing I did forget is that. Uh, these two, if you kind of look at them, they're two back-to-back -back triangles. So I forgot that your uh, your angles are bisected. So my apologies. So extra extra rule that I forgot to mention. Um, so yes, you these two sides. So yeah, they did give you enough information. If this is 54. Then we got to remember we're going to split these. These two will be the same, okay? So they want to know uh, A, B, C, and they want to know uh, B, A, C. B, A, C, okay? Well, if your opposite angles are equal, right, then when we bisect them, it'll be the same. In other words, if this is 54, this is 54 up here. Uh, if we cut those in half, 54 divided by 2 is going to be uh, 27. So let's say B, A, D equals 54 degrees. So therefore, B, A, C is equal to one half of that, uh, so it's going to be 27 degrees. So this is your answer. My apologies, I forgot, I forgot about that. I'm sorry. We're doing circles right now. I'm a little off my game. Okay. So, AP, AP, right here is equal to 3x minus 1. And PC, what's PC? PC is equal to x plus 9. Again, it doesn't matter if this is a rhombus in this case, you know, uh, what we know is that those two things are going to be congruent to each other. Uh, so we got uh, 3x minus 1 is equal to x plus 9, uh, which means we're going to get, uh, again, you can do the math and subtract x from both sides and add 1 to both sides, so x is going to be equal to 5. Again, not your answer, not your answer, okay, so be careful, that is not your answer. What we need to do is we need to plug that back in, right? Well, they want to know AC, which is the whole thing. Um, so essentially, pick one to plug it back into it. Let's say 3 times 5 minus 1, right? Let's do that. And that will be uh, 14. Again, if I plug it in here, uh, 5 plus 9, that's also 14. So it doesn't matter which one you do. The big thing you need to know is that uh, AC is going to be 28. Okay, it's going to be the whole thing. So again, Make sure you're answered in the question that they're asking, okay? All right, moving on, moving on, because we're going on 20 minutes here. Um, 2x minus 4 dB. dB. dB is 2x minus 4. So that whole thing is 2x minus 4. And I told you that uh, PB, PB, where the hell is PB? PB, oh, this little chunk right here is equal to 2x minus 9, okay? Um, you got a couple different ways you can set this up. Um, you can you can add this one together uh, twice um, and then set it equal to this one. That, that would be my, my biggest suggestion is to, to just go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to say 2, right, 2 of the small ones is equal to the big one, okay? Uh, let's go ahead, let's solve that, let's distribute. We're going to get a 4x minus 18 is equal to 2x minus 4. Subtract 2x from both sides, so we're going to get 2x minus 18 is equal to negative 4. We're going to add 18 to both sides, so negative, uh, that's going to be positive 14. I'm going to divide by 2, I'll find out that x is equal to 7. What were they asking for? They were asking for... PD. Okay, so PD. So again, 
what do we want to do? We want to plug it back into this guy right here because we know that PB and PD are the same length. So let's plug seven back into there. So that's two M seven minus nine, which is 14 minus nine, which is going to be five. So PD equals five. All right, line through, end of the line. Uh, XZ, you got uh, WT, WT, WT is three. XZ is uh, ZX is six, that's fine, you got that. Uh, X, the XY. XY uh, is definitely not 90. You have XY as being 90. All right, be, care hey, be careful. This is, this is not an angle here. This is not an angle. XY is a side. Okay, so XY, they want this right here, okay? Um, all right, well, let's do it. Well, we know if this is 3, we know this is 3, and this is 3, and this is 3, okay? All right, hopefully, hopefully at some point you went over the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem over there in your school. Um, there's a few different ways to do this, a few different ways to set this up, but um, essentially, long story short, you know that uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, okay? Um, right? In this case, it's actually going to be xt and ty, so we're saying pretty much it's going to be xt squared plus ty squared is equal to xy squared, okay? So again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this, like I said, because we also know that this is a right angle in here. Um, you you could have set this up differently. Um, there's there's a few different ways you could have done. You could have set up the Pythagorean theorem this way, right? Say that this whole thing is six, and that pretty much x squared plus another x squared is equal to six squared. So uh, you know, pick your poison. You can do whatever you want. Um, but here we're going to solve it uh, this way. So we know x t and t y are both uh, three, right? These are both three. So what are we going to say? Three squared plus another three squared is equal to xy squared. Well, 3 squared is 9. 9 to 9 is 18. xy squared is equal to 18. We're going to take the square root of both sides and say that xy is equal to radical 18. Um, again, I don't know how far your teacher wants to take it, um, but you should uh, split this. It should be radical 9 times radical 2. Right. Um, and again, so again, 9 times 2 makes 18, and you could take the square root of 9, you could say 3 radical 2, and you could say that's one. Uh, you're never going to get a pretty answer with these. There's always going to be one messed up side. This is actually one of the classical problems where they started talking about, uh, what's it called, um, irrational numbers back in the dawn of time, you know? Um, so, what else we got? WTZ, WTZ is 90 degrees. Yeah, fantastic. That's part of the definition, right? is that it is a type of rhombus, therefore your diagonals are going to uh, create a 90 degree angle. And they want to know what is W, Y, X. W, Y, X. Okay, so again, you know your corners are 90, and we know from the last problem that these go ahead and bisect each other, so I see you have these labeled all as 45. So again, if they're bisected, yeah, it's going to be 45 degrees, okay? So uh, listen, I got some work I got to go do. Um, I hope this helped. Um, please, please, pretty please, the trigger on top. Set, send me more questions, okay? I will gladly ask for whatever I can do to help you now, okay? So listen, I hope you have a great day. I hope this, uh, this helps, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.